gotta admit, it's kind of close. Like, so there's your picture. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's the general head shape and shit. But your head shape looks different now. Yeah, it's because my head changed as I started lifting more weights. Interesting. Like, uh, like I'm 100% like starting this because of testosterone and shit. I'm like, that shit. Are we ready to rock? Yeah. So we're recording shit. Okay, hold him. Of course. Nice to meet you. Oh, yeah. Avery, you don't exist anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> we gonna put this in. Oh man. Okay. Um. So, what is your name, and what do you do? Uh, my name is Cole Newman, aka Cole's Color, and I paint sometimes, as you might have noticed by my yeah, just my gear, just a little bit of paint here yeah, and there sometimes. Yeah. And uh, what kind of painting do you normally do? Um. So I just heard a new term that I really like called processed art. Process artist. Hmm. I really like that term, but basically it's just I make swirly paintings, so like this kind of stuff. Um. I basically just use gravity to make different contraptions and it makes patterns for me and it's super fun yeah uh, i just get to play all day that's the big thing is i never want it to be like work it's just play that's actually such a cool name though for a process artist because yeah. it literally is about so changing the process for sure it's a little bit of a flex but actually i the reason i know that is because my wikipedia page is in process and <laughs> it, it's written at the top and i was like that's such a good term oh my god that's crazy they have a wikipedia page it, too it'll be up in a month or two so holy shit that's it's kind of crazy yeah no that's insane okay yeah um sick and i guess how long have you been doing it for and like how'd you get started and all that so i guess it was right about three years ago almost on the dot it was like may 10th or something oh wow three years ago though my first video was posted i made the i made a painting in february of 2020 it was my first time doing it. It's my pendulum painting. It's actually in the hallway right now. Um, and so that was the first time I started. I was on a painting date and then kind of forgot about it. Mm. It worked really well. We've recorded it. And then my mom was like, can you do that to a bigger canvas? And so she uh, basically handed me this four foot by four foot canvas. I painted it with the same technique and she secretly recorded it. And then said, here you go. Here's recording. My friend about a month later. So now we're into May was like, you should post it. And so I did, and people liked it. And then they asked for a tutorial. And so I gave this really, really crappy tutorial where I said, um, more than I actually talked. It like literally the, one of the most liked comments was CEO of, um, <laughs> and I've gotten a little bit better with my speaking now, but that, that was what started. I got 25 million views. I got 300,000 subscribers overnight. Um, Holy literally shit. in 24 hours. Um, and I was like, maybe I should keep doing this. So that's that's how it yeah. started was there a second after that question i forgot <laughs> no no that's kind of pretty much it yeah, yeah. No, that's fuck okay i actually didn't know that uh that it blew up that much yeah i because i know you told me like this story but not just the fact that it literally was a giant wave yeah i was zero to 100 i literally <clears throat> didn't have any art career or nothing i had posted two videos when tiktok appeared and they did pretty well and then i was like yeah this app's boring i'm moving on and then posted that just for fun. Shout out to my friend Ali Nazari, who now... Actually, he moved to Austin recently. He was in San Francisco paying an ungodly amount of money for his rent. But I get, Yeah, exactly. Um, but that place is ridiculous. But tangent aside, um, yeah. So, I mean, that's how I started. And then I just basically... I've always wanted to be creative and do it for a living and, and, and like help people. Those were the two things. And so being able to inspire people to, to want to paint, that's kind of... the it's the perfect thing for me so yeah and so i guess uh what is painting and art and all of that just mean to you now that you've been actually seriously into it at this point so you mean personally or like broad like what is the definition of painting no, to me like what does it mean to you personally to me it means like play mm. like i for me personally i think my process and my creation so fast and so like dynamic and it makes me happy doing it like if you have a smile on my face if you see that then it means i'm like enjoying it and if that ever goes away then i don't want to be doing it um okay. so i think for me I've, I've always had this desire to create i've always been doing um what do you call it building things or right now i have a, a jewelry making kick that i just started yesterday um and so this has been a great way for me to monetize my creativity and i've been able to push it way past what i could even imagine like i i just got back from seattle teaching classes um like 
and I used a swing set of all things to, to do my technique. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just about sharing with others that, but the art artistry itself is just the creation and the process and just play. That's kind of a more ambiguous answer, but that's first yeah. thing in mind. So no, that's an awesome way of thinking about it actually. Um, cause I think you're the first person that's said play actually um when it comes to like what i guess like being art and creative and all that is for you and so i love that i just try to be quirky and original so it worked yeah. out <laughs> i'm a different kind of guy exactly i'm not like other guys yeah but um okay yeah i mean even more than that like i i think it's definitely about like people are like oh it's about portraying a message and whatever else but realistically you could put anything on any medium and spin it any way in my opinion so I could give you a blank canvas and tell you why it's it's talking about why we should have um, school lunches for every kid for free. Like there's literally I, I could make that up on the fly if you wanted me to. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it's more about people's desire to create and tell their message. And even if they don't tell other people, it could be an internal message. Like I have pieces that I've kind of painted when I was in a really dark place and like you probably couldn't tell, but to me, like, it was getting my emotion out and playing to kind of get back to a, a neutral state, if that makes sense. So, mm -hmm. um, that's, that's kind of my answer, but mm -hmm. I think the art world's kind of silly sometimes. Yeah, it can be, because it's a lot of, like, perspective and shit, because in the time that I've known you and stuff, uh, I'll, like, just go through your comments and stuff on videos and stuff sometimes, and I'll just see, like, haters that are, like what the fuck this is an art or whatever or, oh that's an abomination and shit but i feel like it's because once again people have like such a close-minded view about like what is considered art and stuff yeah you know and once again i love your perspective of what art means to you because it's literally just something that you thoroughly enjoy they have fun with yeah and just obviously self-expression and all that jazz as well too but everything is art in this entire world in my opinion yeah and so is what i guess helps you uh when it comes to like seeing all of that negativity and shit oh i just don't read it I mean, oh, really? when i started i thought i had to reply and read every comment and i got probably about fifty thousand comments the first day and so and most of them were negative and so i mean I, it put me in a dark place immediately because i mean i would tell my friends like i have never i have so much attention but i never felt so alone um and no everyone was like oh yeah mr million followers whatever just kind of brushing me off so that was a tough place for a while um but as i've kind of grown i've realized like whenever someone's leaving a comment it's looping in the background so there's no reason not to just or like let them do that like i love the only time i ever go in my comment section is when i'm trolling basically like we're correcting someone's grammar or whatever else because that's who cares like um, I have a friend of mine who's an artist that, uh, or like content creator, and she like screenshots all of her burns back at people. And I, I it's hilarious to look at her do it. I love that she does that, but it's just not my jam. I, I, there's some videos where I, I'll like log in and see if there's like a couple comments and I'll read if they're positive. But other than that, I'm like, at this point, I probably have close to half a million hate comments, like just, just a conservative estimate. I just don't care anymore. Yeah. <laughs> So after a while, you just, you separate yourself from your brand, essentially. So I'm my character. So I, my character is the same as me. I mean, I do nothing different. I mean, I, I hopefully you can verify that. Um, but I can separate Cole's color from Cole and be like, they're hating on that guy. Who cares? Fuck that guy, uh, basically, as well. And then I can look at it as a subjective view. So I just don't care anymore. <laughs> Okay. That's a lot that's, to go off of. No, that's actually really interesting uh, that you think of yourself as the artist part of you is its own character. And because uh, you and I had posted a video of doing that like squirt gun painting or whatever. Yeah. And like just reading through the comments and shit, I was like, damn, I feel kind of bad right now. I was just like feeling sad as shit. You know, just because uh, I'm very much. I guess the type of person where I like wear my heart on my sleeve and like when it comes to all the content creation stuff like I re it really is just me you yeah. know especially with these interviews and stuff yeah. you know so and it but it's crazy yeah. it can affect people so much 
not only affecting you also this that's why i always ask my friends when i do a collaborative post if they want to be connected to it or not because i guess i just kind of said you are music <laughs> So I didn't really ask you, but normally I do. So sorry if you had to deal with that. But I figure oh, no, it was no. a net one positive. Too. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting. So shout out to my father. He, we didn't do this, or we didn't go through with it. But the commenters can also have repercussions. So I had a guy that told me, what did he say? He was like, this is, this is shit. If I ever see you in public, I will fuck you up, essentially. Which, I see that all the time. I don't care. But it was my first YouTube comment ever, and my dad was not having it. So he, and I, he didn't, I didn't know this. He basically searched the username. He realized it was a last name, searched it in LinkedIn. His dad came up. He found the son who it actually was, based on the date of birth, uh, from his, that guy's last name. Then went to his school and realized he played for the baseball team and then went down in the rules of the baseball team and it said um, that there's like a, a hate clause. So if they put internet hate, then they can be kicked out of... Uh, and this was all from two Google searches. Like he wasn't spending four hours doing this. That's the dude's, insane. And uh, so there was a internet hate clause. So he had a screenshot and a draft of the evidence that this guy had done this um, and said, Cole, if you want me to send this, I will basically to ruin his whole life um, because he would get expelled from school and from baseball just because of comment. And I mean, like if it was said in person, that could be not good, but it's the internet. Right. So I, I was like, dude, I appreciate it. And it kind of made me like, my dad really likes me. And I, <laughs> yeah, it's like, damn. Um, but long tangent for that. But basically TLDR is like, you never know from a hater perspective or a receiver, what kind of fat clash you can get. So <laughs> Yeah. Isn't that crazy, though? No, yeah, because our whole online identity and shit, you know, is, like, we're just out on the internet. Yeah. Um, And I kind of love that you decided not to be, like, petty as fuck about it. That's, uh, that's more be... than petty. <laughs> I mean... It's, it's like, petty taken to the maximum, basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just not worth it. He didn't know. He's... Yeah, kids are dumb. Yeah, he, and he, I mean, he's 20, so, I mean, not that young, but, uh, I mean, he, like I said, just like how I look at myself as a brand or my, my social media presence, he did too. So he doesn't look at it like there's a human on the other end. And, I mean, it, mm. it's not a good thing, but I don't hold it against people that do. It's like, that's interesting that, like, you're letting yourself understand his perspective, though, on that. And yeah. Stuff. I don't know if we've, talked about this before but are you like a big people pleaser oh big time yeah i mean not anymore i used to be like anytime someone would tell me to do something like growing up i would do in the track that my parents told me to do or when someone would ask me to do something i would do it even at the expense of myself or just trying to get people to like me doing whatever and then i realized one day i was actually sorry you probably had more of that question but i just jumped in but um i was driving down the road and I don't remember exactly who it was. I think it was my dad. But when I'm driving, a lot of times, I'm when I'm taking an unprotected left turn, mm. I, I want to just get there and just take a breath and then go. Even if there's a big gap, I still, I don't just go immediately. It just freaks me out, even though I'm a pretty aggressive driver. And somebody was like, you should have gone there. And then this, you should have gone there as well or something like that. And I said, um, but I didn't. And I, I just out of nowhere said that and it just clicked like I don't have to do what other people tell me to do I don't have to go at the pace they're going at It's the same thing as on my legs here. Actually, I mean, you might be able to see it It's I, if I, I don't understand. Oh, yeah, yeah So in my art show, I had this interactive piece um, Where I, I you know this but we'll just say it for the uh, basically anybody I built my studio it was called home and anyone could enter my home and interact with it. So there was live paint, there were Sharpies, there was a hammer, there was like a drill and a saw, and you could do whatever you want. And I wrote stuff everywhere, like little tic-tac-toe boards, and one of the things I did was I wrote, I don't understand, because I was really struggling at the time. And I still don't know to this day, it's been two years, but someone wrote, you don't have to. And this is the handwriting they wrote it in. And so it kind of like, it's another one of those, like, I don't have to know where I'm going, I don't have to know or do what people say I can just be me and that's okay as long as I keep doing something so yeah yeah that's been a big realization recently calling people on their shit versus just doing just rolling over that's awesome and because I was also uh 
gonna ask i guess how that ties in now that you've been getting so big and there's so many brands or famous people that are trying to work with you and stuff like that um if do you have like a hard time with like managing all of that saying no to certain things or pushing back and be like whoa, whoa, whoa no you know um yes and no i know there's certain scenarios where i do kind of roll over because it's it's needed like unfortunately with uh we were mentioning this earlier i had a prior commitment to teach classes on um in august and i just found out that avery's graduation is the same day his girlfriend uh, his girlfriend yes or my girlfriend <laughs> uh <laughs> yeah remove the brand she's just the brand's girlfriend <laughs> exactly um but yeah so and what was the question again i forgot uh just if you have a hard time saying no to brands oh and yeah stuff, um like standing up for yourself yeah so that was an example where i did i really pushed back i was like yo i can't do this but i was actually also contractually bound basically uh, so i was and the other thing is it's not only about the contract it's not only about the person it's about the connections and the the opportunities <laughs> and so it's i i kind of weigh back and forth um when i'm conceding and when i'm pushing back like for instance i have some struggles with my little brother he's kind of like anything when it crosses me or when it is a negative to him he plays the victim immediately um and it goes on attack mode basically and i've just realized that i just need whatever happens just turn the other cheek basically so that's when i'll roll over but the i don't want to start crap i just like to end it essentially so mm -hmm. but the rest of the time i'm like dude that's some bullshit basically and we're not doing that um but yeah with brands a lot of times they want to take advantage of you they want to come out and be like okay we're gonna do this collab and you're gonna pay for everything and we're gonna so, uh an example right now is like you know lad bible buzzfeed all those yeah. i used to let them use my content for free and this is a psa to everybody that's making content if they reach out do you sign something that basically says they can use your content whenever for free and so reading the fine print making sure that's not in there or saying no completely or charging them because i did the math one of my lad bible videos that they posted did 50 million views and they made like 180,000 minimum. Oh wow. Off that. And they when I told them when when they asked again, I said I charge whatever it was. I think it was like 15 grand just to throw a number in their face and they were like, "No, we're good." So, um I've realized my worth and I've finally realized like I'm the big fish and they're trying to catch me. I'm not like this little fry they're throwing a bone basically. And even when you're a smaller creator, like you need to have that mentality when brands come to you. Like I, my management told me a number for when I work with Microsoft that I was not comfortable with, but I was like, sure. And they, they accept it with no, no thought behind it. They were like, okay, sounds good. Um, so that's the kind of thing you just got to ask. You just got to stand up for yourself and really believe in yourself. So, um, but, it's hard though. Mm. It's really hard. Even for me. I mean, every day I'm like, I'll do it for free, whatever in my head and then i talked to my management they're like we'll we'll take care of this <laughs> yeah so okay so hmm. my tangents are confusing you no i'm just no i do this a lot in like every video where i just i stop and think yeah uh, and i talked about this in the last video i just recorded um over the weekend but I try to always just absorb everything someone says. Yeah, you're listening to, like, receive, not listening to reply, essentially. Yeah, exactly. I can tell that you're doing that, which is awesome as an interviewer. Thank you. And so that just means sometimes, like, I don't have a question right away lined up because I'm still, like, I was just thinking about everything and letting it absorb. But, so... And that's totally fine. I'll just stare intently into your eyes. Okay, so I guess, um, three years, really, in the grand scheme of things, it's not really that long, so it's crazy just, like, how big and how fast it's been, and yeah. so I guess what's been the hardest part about being in the position you are in now? I think for a while it was burnout. I... I've taken multiple like three month breaks basically. And luckily I'm in a position where I'm okay to do that. Um, right now, 
the biggest thing is not actually about the painting. It's and right now I feel really good. It's actually my I bipolar disorder. And so it's like struggling with going with the ebbs and flows of that. Like right now I feel great, really neutral and stuff, but that's been the big hindrance is like I can't be on all the time. Because there's sometimes where I wake up at two PM, like okay, my day's done. <laughs> Um, and so that's been the biggest struggle for me at this point. Of course, you always, everybody battles with self-worth and self-worth and things like that, especially when it comes to social media, like, um, putting a number to what you do or just realizing that like you're providing value to these people more and the hate comments don't matter basically. So it's the, the two ends of that are mostly the bipolar at this point And then also just kind of basic interpersonal stuff um i really like most of the time i can come up with something really fast but i'm i'm really lucky that right now i i don't have anything so and not that there isn't struggles but there's not something where i'm like man i'm really this is rough kind of thing mm -hmm. and it, there's probably going to be one tomorrow but right now i can't think of anything which is a good thing in my opinion so um that's really about it as far as that question hmm. <laughs> so I know um, it can kind of just come out of nowhere at times. And what do you do when you, for example, made a prior commitment to doing a show or to travel or to do a piece for somebody, but then like it feels like the world is just caving down on you? How do you manage that like between taking care of yourself, but then also taking care of the professional aspect of your business? For me my word is all that matters it's basically like i'm going to this it like hurts me to my core to <clears throat> rescind that so essentially if i commit to something the first thing i commit to is the thing i'm gonna do so for me it's like if i have back to back most of them i'm excited about it like for instance um we got the art show coming up at the end of the month which i am beyond excited for and then immediately go to a family reunion and it's it's intense it's a lot and same thing with las vegas immediately when i'm finishing teaching classes there going to big bend national park and so it's like these things back to back i mean luckily the these opportunities that i'm getting these commitments are all really exciting but um i take it in the order that this has been received especially if i like value the person and like it, it's if some if it's like let's say a brand comes to me and haggles the price for a, a week or something and we get it down to something I'm not comfortable with and I'm supposed to work with them on this day but then teaching classes like in a certain city or whatever else comes up I'm gonna be like later brand because if they're negotiating it means they don't value you kind mm -hmm. of thing so that's the only time if, if it's someone that I care about and they've asked me to do something or it's something I'm very excited about whatever I said first is the thing I'm gonna do hmm. that's the way I look at it and that's where it comes into not being a people pleaser. You really have to be able to say like, this is too much. Because for me, the reason I'm like that is when I first started painting, I did water bottles and hydro dipping stuff where um, at the beginning and this, this company approached me like, hey, we wanna have a storefront in Las Vegas where we do body marbling. Essentially it's hydro dipping where you have the paint on top of the water and you dip it in, but with your arm. So you get your arm all swirly and stuff. Um, and this was right when I started and basically I liked liked in past tense to think I was like a roll with the punches kind of guy but I am very much not and so I kind of like came ill prepared I spent like eight months prepping but then towards the end I was just like ah, it'll work out like I had all my my ratios of water thickeners and all this random crap but then turns out the water in Las Vegas was too hard to do the technique it just yeah for whatever reason it broke the surface tension which made the it was just a whole shit show and so they pulled the plug on it and it oh it not only hurt my reputation but my manager's reputation um because he stuck his neck out for me and um after that i vowed to myself that i that will never happen again it, i will follow through on my commitments i will get things done and i'll knock it out of the park um and so from it's been fantastic i mean i spend 20 panic attacks in three months meticulously breaking down every second having an itinerary of whatever it is but it works out perfectly like cooper i had the art performance last year and it's kind of side note it's kind of cool 
February of 2020 was my uh, first uh, painting. February of 2021, my first art show on the exact same day. And then February of 2022, my first solo performance. And then February of 2023, we announced my first LA art show. So it's kind of crazy, the perspective there. But going back to the performance, I planned everything to a T down to the minute when people would arrive. I, here's when I need you to do this, this thing, the caterers come at this time, even down to just in case I had a migraine, bring Adderall or uh, Advil. I'm prescribed for Adderall. Don't do drugs. Um, and, but yeah, Advil. And I did get a migraine. So like every single thing was already planned out. So that's how I'm going to go for the rest of my life doing that. Um, and I think that's how I'm going to get above the rest because I will deliver on what I say. Hmm. And it will, that first thing, because like they bought a storefront in Las Vegas, like bought it cash to do what I want, what I was planning on doing the body marbling. And it just blew up in my face. Um, so yeah, never going to have that happen again, but don't know what the question was anymore, but that's, that's your answer. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's awesome. And like, that's something I also personally really value about you as a friend as well, because you do really keep your word about stuff. And, appreciate it um i don't know just that reliability you know really matters a lot for me personally especially because i am such a busy person so i literally like i push it everything on my calendar so with hanging out with friends to doing business or interviews or like modeling and all of that it yeah. has to be on my calendar um and so and same because usually when i make a commitment and i'm serious about it or whatever i like i have to do it yeah you know, um, and w between friends, especially if it's like a, just something we made up, like, like, Hey, let's go do this today. Like if I were to come to you, especially if it's far in advance and be like, Hey man, I'm not gonna be able to do that day. Yeah. That's different than like leaving them high and dry. Or like if we, if you had an event where you had like 20 people coming, like there's like a, a, a ebb and flow there. So yeah, I appreciate that. Because I think the same with you, like very reliable and I'm the same thing with the, t the calendar even to the point where I've realized that there's so many times where my friends have been like, Hey, let's do this at some point. And so what I do is like, I write down on the calendar, reach out to this person to schedule even because that's when I, if I, I know that if I write it down, it means I value that friendship. And if I forget to write it down, it means like, Oh, I guess it wasn't supposed to be. Mm. And I, I mean, I hate to say that, but that's really how it is. Like for instance, uh, Faraz and I painted a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I saw. And he was like, I told him when we get back, I'll hit. When I get back, I'll hit you up for us to get dinner because he wanted to get dinner and show me some Pakistani food. And um, it was on the schedule for today, so I just texted him. So, fuck yeah, pretty cool. And you connected us. Yeah, <laughs> I'd met him before, but um, yeah, but yeah, I'm the same. Really like I use a to-do list app called Todoist and I there literally it says breathe three times a day like just doesn't really but every part of my life is on there mm. so take a breath every couple seconds exactly no yeah and um, I I'm very much the same way uh where I'll keep a note of like shit I need to do this or reach back out to this person either that or nine times out of ten I'll just immediately be like hey let's just like make the plans right now. Even if they're loose plans, let's at least put it down on a calendar and we can solidify it later on once we're more certain. Yeah. Ah, uh, found my Avery though. I, I don't know. I've dated like, I've, people from like literally like every single ethnicity. And mm -hmm. so the names are just all over the place. Um, all right, um cool. so what are we doing? What are your thoughts? So basically with this piece, I made it. I liked it at the time. After it dried, I was like, eh. And so how I found kind of one of the reasons that I wanted to keep painting was by painting over things. So you probably can't see in the video, but there's, no, a, lot of, there's a lot of texture and kind of hear it. Um, and so what's cool is when I do a pendulum over this or like my painting, it, there's, it leaves a bump. And so when I paint over it, you get all that texture coming through and then you can add lines on top of it. It's really interesting. And so that was one of the things that was like, wow, this is amazing. I'm going to keep doing this. And so this piece, I don't love, but this would make really good texture. And so Jerry and I are going to go to town on it, do the background. And then I've got a cool idea for something fun for the video, uh, for painting the actual thing. But yeah, let's hit it. Fuck it, dude. You know the drill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, uh, 
just for the sake of the video and shit, how tall are you again? I am 5'7 on a good day. Or sorry, 6'7 on a good day. 5'7. Jesus. Yeah, he's 5'7. I'm say, actually like 4'2. I say that all the time on accident. And pe the one that I love though is like you got those guys who are like, oh yeah, I'm so tall. And then, um, so my favorite thing is they're like, dude, fellow tall guy, how tall are you? And you can tell they're like lying about their height. And I say 6'2. And you just see their entire ego just melt away. <laughs> and it makes me so happy. Especially if they're like trying to talk up some girl near me. Yeah. Oh, it's so evil, but it's so fun. I uh, love that shit. Because yeah. I, um, I used to always like think that I was short. Uh, even though I'm 5'11. Yeah. And like, it just so happens that like a lot of my friends are fucking really tall. Like, because you're 6'7, uh, yeah. Faraz, one He's of my other best friends, is, I think 6'4, 6'3 or something. Yeah. Um, and then, like, just, I don't know, just hanging out with, like, tall people, man, just, it does something to your mental a little bit. In what way? Just, I don't know, to where I'm like, damn, I'm so short, even though, like, you're not. <laughs> By standards, I'm technically not, especially, like. How tall are you? Uh, 5'11. So, it's like. Dude, 5'11 doesn't exist, let's be honest. No, like, I'm actually, like, a true 5'11. I wish I could be, like, yeah, I'm six foot, but, like, I just. No, I'm 5'11". 5'11 doesn't exist. You're six foot. <laughs> no. I, because, you know what's funny? I met this uh, other model uh, just randomly one day, and she was like, how tall are you? You're not six foot, right? And I'm like, no, I'm 5'11". And it's, so it's like, people can just tell that are in the industry, you know? So yeah. I've learned at this point, like, just lying about your height is literally pointless. Because, like, even with people that are taller than me, I can, like, just instantly recognize how tall, you know? Mm -hmm. Um... I get that. Yeah. For regular height standards, you're well above the average, what? Isn't it five, eight and a half or something for men? I think it's getting taller. Oh, I think it's like, or... yeah, it might be 5'10 at this point. Wow. Okay, well then you're barely above average. How does that feel? It feels kind of like whatever, I guess, at this point. Because like, uh, constantly think about it all the time with like modeling and shit. Because like, you know, I love doing runway shows. Yeah. But like, height does matter a lot for runway shows and... I'm at the very, like, bottom end of what is acceptable for most designers. Really? And so. All right. We're going to put this here. Actually, we're going to put this here. We're going to let it dry. Okay. Um, but. Keep talking. Yeah. What, uh. Do you feel like, um. Noise. Keep talking. Do you ever have that, like, I guess, or a lot of those moments where you meet people for the first time, like, clients or, like. Uh, people that have been following you and they're just like what the fuck you're a lot taller than I thought you would be Oh, yeah, everybody no one it's so funny is that you such big canvases, too? Yeah, most of the time people are like are you kidding me? How did you appear? <laughs> um, so yeah, it's kind of hilarious when that stuff happens and I'm just sitting there like yeah, I <laughs> It's like people just can't get over how tall I am. I'm like all right guy. Yeah, it's like a Look, I have a personality other than my height. Yeah. It used to not be that way. Like, my identity was I had to be the tallest guy in the room. Oh, really? And I met a guy who's seven foot six, and I was like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, he had to duck his shoulders to get under the doorway. Holy shit. So, so not my jam. <laughs> That's interesting. And I didn't uh, ask you this earlier, but paint the sides also. Yeah. Or, okay. Did you have, like, a specific moment where you were like, holy shit, like, I'm a real artist like i'm a professional artist now uh, i mean probably when i sold my biggest piece ever uh I was what like, was it uh you know price or size uh just like what was the th it was piece i guess it was for my performance in february of 2021 2022 oh, okay no, 2022 yeah um i it was 20 foot by eight foot and she wired me in the money. foot by eight foot. Yeah. That was the performance. I was like, dude, let me set the stage for you. <clears throat> yeah. It, I, when I put it in here to do the texture, as I did the texture. Yeah. I was standing here and I had to jump in that corner across the painting to make sure that I could get it all to dry and stay there. 
It was so it was the most expensive jump of my life. Um, but let me set the stage for you. This woman had never met me, found me on Instagram, got on a, on a Zoom call with me with my manager. My bed wasn't made in the background, which was hilarious. Um, I didn't realize that till later. She wired me the full amount ahead of time, had never met me still. I hadn't even made the painting yet, and I still had to ship it to her across the country, and she paid for shipping already, too. Wow. So she came to the performance. I'd already booked everything. She's front row. We had just met, and now I'm performing, making her piece with her right there. And that was wild. Dude, I love that. I love that people just, like, can trust you. Um, I don't know why she did. She even said, I don't know why I did. <laughs> like, meaning, like, I don't know what specifically made me, like, I can trust this guy. But I appreciate that. I mean, I think it's just because, like, you can really just tell when, so, like, like, specifically for you, you could just tell that you're a genuine, good person. Thanks, man. And so, Appreciate like, it. yeah, because, once again, I'm, like, picky as hell with my friends and who I spend my time with and all that. And mm -hmm. so, like, I generally think, like, you're an amazing person. Thank you, and man. So, I don't know, I value our friendship. Yeah, I do so, as well. Yeah. yeah. It it made me, I'm not going to go into specifics, but when I when you asked me to, to drop everything and come see you, or you didn't really ask, I just said, do you need me? And you said, yeah. And I just ran, it made me happy that you felt comfortable asking me that. So yeah. like, I'm, I'm glad that you feel that we're good enough friends where I can just do that for you. Yeah, no, that's for some dude. I don't know what we're doing here, but. So I don't either. I was like, shit, taint. Good, good friends. I, I found it so funny. Good friends don't really hug or like handshake. It, like yeah. with my best friend, Justin, like, I don't think I've ever like, ever given him a hug or a handshake when we met so it's like when i'm like when we got good friends i'm like yeah. i don't know what to do yeah. <laughs> and the, sometimes you do right but you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what i'm talking about yeah it's kind of strange it's so like, like uh, you just see the person like what's up bro like it's like you just saw them yesterday yeah. you don't need to like do anything weird and it's not weird it's just like an a big gesture you know what i mean no so i think uh but everyone's different i know for me personally it's just because i'm super awkward when it comes to uh physical affection with other friends and stuff like that yeah so it took me a very long time to even just be comfortable with hugging my friends especially any of my friends that are girls as well because okay. right? i'm just like very like uh, uh, yeah like uh, who, what is this uh, not supposed to mean anything <laughs> no it's not like that <laughs> no and then so i don't know um definitely feel that it's definitely gotten better though over time i'm the same i so affection was hard for me for a long time um and now i'm just like whatever yeah um it, just in general like my family and stuff especially it was so weird for a while um but yeah i've gotten a lot better like i can just sit on the couch with with my friends and put my arm around my homie and we can just sit there <laughs> yeah just miss our making out and all that like <laughs> exactly love you bro um no it's funny most of uh, some of my friend groups have actually kissed each other i I did not partake personally, but props to them for just going for it. All of them are dudes, yeah. and it's just like, go for it, bro. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, so what we're planning on doing here is these have to dry for a bit. Okay. So, and then we got to do another quick layer, and then we'll paint. So you want to go back to the casting couch, or yep. you want to just hang out? Yeah. Um, all right, to the casting couch. <laughs> to seattle everybody they're all content creators all the other people teaching classes so we just made a bunch of collabs it was so I, it was so funny like it's so like kind of kind of gross honestly people uh there's one lady that i regard i have a bunch of people in there that's like they're all like 50s 40s 50s and i uh told her or she we did a collab together and she had looked at her like a mom to me and she just looks like a son basically and in the comments the whole thing was like there's so much sexual tension like are you kidding me we're both like standing there doing a swirly painting like yeah exactly so yikes um shout out, so shout out to canela though she's awesome but i was like those comments are just gross so no dude people on the internet are weird yeah and that that one that one got to me i'm like dude like what so people are too horny yeah exactly like just bonk yep no horny basically so that would be a good uh art piece just take a one of those rubber hammers and just bonk 
Dude, I did that actually. It's funny oh, enough. Yeah. yeah, actually, my friend did, and then I sold it. It was in the art show called Home, the or the oh yeah thing at a hammer, and it, I wrote "Leave Your Mark," and I had it up on like two sawhorses, and the hammer was sitting next to it. And I was hoping somebody would hit it. My friend Carson Bro hit it with a hammer, and uh, and he also had a glove covered in paint that he threw on it. It looked like a used condom, and um, I don't know if you're allowed to say that on your on your YouTube video, but uh, it I... it broke. Um, or like was busted all through the middle. I had it hanging here, and someone screenshot it and said, "I want that. How much?" And I named some stupid price, and they were like, "Okay." And now it's in the back of all of their videos. That's crazy. Um, I love that. Yeah, because they make content too. I was just, I see it, and I'm like, <coughs> "Wow." Do you fuck yeah? Okay. So and it's awesome. I mean, uh, everything is art, and every there's a buyer for everything at every price. So, hmm. as an artist, you just got to remember that because your art's not going away. As long as you got a place to store it. That's not, and that's so interesting to me too, that like, uh, even to this day, I feel like you still get surprised yep. sometimes about like what people are willing to like pay you or like people that reach out and all that jazz. Or what my process creates. Sometimes I'm like, what, where did that come from? Yeah. So yeah, I love being surprised. I love surprise parties. <clears throat> Um, no one's ever given me a surprise party, but I would like it. When's your birthday? October 22nd. Uh, I was just saying to anyone watching, if they know me, um, yeah, so. <laughs> October 13th. But, okay. October 22nd. Did I say October 13th? October 22nd. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I, I misheard. I might've just said 13th on accident for some reason. Okay. But October 22nd. Yeah. Cool. Um, it was just my house. Don't birthday. expect a surprise party. Okay. I will probably Do not put it on your couch. I will forget it in about five minutes. So <laughs> I, I wasn't trying to get you to do one, but I mean, this, then we got evidence. Yeah. No, dude, I, I just, I love throwing parties in general, regardless, or like big events and, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, because obviously like the first thing that got me into modeling, right. Was going to a photo meetup. Yeah. Um, at the Texas studio, uh, cause of Jacob Tran. Mm -hmm. Right. And so just like, at this point, I just, I love hosting these things, uh, like doing stuff, you know, having people meet, yeah, congregate, all of that. No, so. I liked hosting in college. I had three 21st birthdays in a row. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm the same. Hey. I, I don't like to host at my house because it's so small. I mean, it's a two bedroom, but it's hard to host anything there. And it's in Allen, Texas. Like, <sighs> yeah. Um, I've had, I think I had like 12 people there one time and it was like, max and my dog's trying to eat all the food like oh. it's just mess over there yeah so but yeah that, i love that way. that you like to connect people and that's cool that you did at that one place that was the bougie place was good oh at the studio no at the oh, i meant the your celebration party the other day my birthday for party management uh signing oh for that one. Oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah shout out to jerry for getting signed oh thank you yeah um i actually totally forgot about that event also um people i just love people yeah and like i'm sure you're really obviously because like you're literally in the industry of people to a certain extent as well because even though it's like right. art you and your you're in a studio it you're less of a traditional artist and where like you're not locked up in a dark room by yourself just painting in isolation mm -hmm. um which i had an interesting conversation with uh another artist named dj chung uh he was like one of my first videos i posted yeah i think um, i saw you guys sitting on stools yeah yeah yeah, and so um, his whole process is a lot of him being by himself and his inspirations come from him uh, at times of being like very just isolated and lonely um, mentally, right? But then like for you, I guess your whole creative process, a big chunk of it is other humans, being around other people, collaborating, doing things in front of other people for events, all of that. Yeah, yes and no. Um, I think you're definitely right. And from the outside, it's definitely a great observation. But for me, when I'm just left alone, like I got nothing on my schedule, no people coming in, that's when I'm in my element. I love having people in the studio. And for me personally, it gives me a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. But for me to be in my flow, it's solo. Like it's like everybody leave me alone, phone off, see you in an hour, basically. Mm -hmm. Because I know where all of my stuff is. Like I, I'll put my knife right there. And then five minutes later, I'll forget it's there and it doesn't exist anymore. But when I'm, when I'm in my space, I put it there. I know exactly where it is. I have this idea, bam, 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 it's right there. So it's 
it's definitely not what you would expect but i think mm. i get energized by that to be able to lock in so okay that makes sense yeah and um, so you you just have a whole flow state when you're painting for sure okay that's i black out completely like sometimes i'll make four videos and then like just realize i was painting afterwards that's when my best work comes out is when subconscious mind like cause there's a jackson pollock quote that's like when your subconscious works faster than your conscious basically you just go with whatever this is thinking or feeling before you thinking about it so because people can you can tell if, if i'm doing a paintbrush line and i'm thinking about it you can you can see the at least i can the hesitations in it but when i'm just kind of like we'll see what happens that's when it just the flow is there so turn off your brain and go which is it's hard to flip a switch but yeah and i feel like that's one of those things that really does make you such a natural artist because i tried that especially the one day where uh we were trying to do the painting and stuff mm -hmm. and like on some of the strokes you're like just fucking go for it and shit right and yeah. i just i could not process on how to just go for it you were close <clears throat> i could tell like you were just like one little switch flip away from just rolling with it there were a couple times where i'm like he's got it and then like i could tell you thought again kind of thing yeah so it just takes some practice uh, hmm. and also it's about the medium some people paint's not their medium and you find your medium and it that's you, I feel like when you be able to just black out and create, that's your medium. Everyone has different media, and maybe it is painting. Maybe it's just not the right style, or maybe it is right. I don't know, but um, yeah, I can see what you're saying there, and I, I felt the same way. So, I mean, the painting, I thought painting was awesome. So yeah, no, it's so sick. Um, and you got both of them, one I made and the one you made. So it's, it's you got a tufa. Yes, exactly. And I've actually been thinking about a. Uh framing the other one as well recently just putting inside my bedroom yeah um and so got ah fuck i just gotta buy the frame and all that jazz um and find time also to do that i'll bring my my shit back over and help you frame it once you get it okay sec um um yeah i guess so far have you had any like particularly memorable pieces or favorite pieces yeah other than the ones you've mentioned so far i guess yeah the one that always comes up is a piece i did a long time ago um that was actually featured in my first art show that i still have it's actually um my zoom background it's eight foot by six or what is it is it it's six by five so it's a pretty big piece um i don't think i named it but basically what it was is i did a painting i loved and it did really well and then i was like I'm not satisfied with this, so I painted over it. And then I did one of my techniques that I don't really advertise that I actually don't have any pieces here that are that. But basically, I take my texture and I put, like, lines on the canvas. Like, I basically take, put my stick in the paint and then swirl it around. And that's it. That's where the unconscious mind comes through is, like, just going crazy with it. And then I'll take a scraper. There's one over there, basically just a flat tool with a handle. And I swipe it over the painting. And since the texture is bumped up, you'll get the smeared effect on where the texture is raised, but then in the little canyons, they'll stay a perfect line, if that makes sense. So it's a really interesting kind of fluid movement. Um, and I did a piece that, um, when I finished it, I had it propped up and I like was like physically, like viscerally hated it. Like I didn't want to oh. look at it. I didn't want to feel it. And then I left it. I just like, but I didn't want to touch it. So I left it for like six months and then I come back to it and I realize it's like when you look in the mirror when you've gained a bunch of weight and you just viscerally hate what you're looking at. Like, you know what I mean? Like people, at least for me, like I can't help but do that kind of thing. And so my, it was back when my mental was just in the shitter so bad. Like, um, I think I've, I've told you a little bit about the extent of it, but basically it was me looking at that. Like I was looking in the mirror of the reflection of what was going on. Um, and being like, holy shit, I was, that was me. Um, so that piece always gets me and it's a cool little reminder that sits behind me and I mostly forget about it, which is honestly symbolic in itself. Like I've forgotten about where I was there because of how far I've came. So mm -hmm. yeah, that piece forgot the name of it, even though that even shows like how much, like I have the name written on the back. I just like, it's just on my wall and I love the piece for that reason, but I just don't really think about it very often. So a good thing. That's awesome. Yeah. Like 
just the fact that you can associate so much of like where you were at in life, how you're feeling, the situations just surrounding it yeah. and tie all of that emotion and feeling into an art piece. Right. And cause I know for me, like a lot of that is like pretty similar to like me and like all my tattoos and shit. Yeah. Um, and cause I, I know like yeah, tattoos on your legs and stuff, but you don't really do that with your tattoos though. Right. Oh yeah. Ta- they, I, I could do a tattoo tour if you want. Every single one has like a deep meaning. Oh really? I just tell people that I wanted a hermit crab. <laughs> Okay, yeah, because that's what you told me. Yeah. Uh, oh, if yeah. you want to do a oh. tattoo tour. Yeah. Um, I'll do some of them, sure. Okay. Um, some of them aren't a deep meaning, but they signify something. So, like, it's either about a person or about a message. So, okay. like... Let me reframe yeah. the camera. Oh, shit, my leg fell asleep. Not again. Again? I think it's just the yeah. an angle. So, some of them, it's... Oh, I guess you tell me when you're ready. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. So... Some of them are um, signifying a life checkpoint. Some of them are um, things I got to signify friends or whatever else. So, like, this one I got for graduating, um, what do you call it, graduating college. Because there was something that, like, eagles, one of their many symbolisms is, like, rising above um, adversity, essentially. And for me, like, I didn't have to go back to college, but I made the conscious choice to. And I was like, I'm going to finish this because I, like I said, when I make a promise, I keep it. Um, And that one I was on the verge of breaking, basically. Um, Also, I'm not a big Murica guy. uh, So I told him, and neither is my tattoo artist. So I said, we're going to make an Antifa eagle. (laughs) So it's like the least Murica we could make it, basically, while still keeping kind of paying homage to that. Um, next one is, I got this with my best friend, Justin. He has a white tiger drag, or sorry, a white tiger with a Filipino son. He's Filipino. Mm -hmm. And then I got a, uh, white tiger dragon. So, and this is one of my favorite pieces. These two are some of my favorites. Um, moving on to this leg on the front and we'll go to the back after that. This is a tiger and I let my, I let my tattoo artist, I trust him and just let him go crazy. So that actually he's holding an orb, um, which is fun i don't know there's no other reason behind that but <laughs> basically and the the back on my back of my calves does have a lot of symbolism but um i uh had a what do you call it i've had two surgeries right here and i wanted to not only cover i've always wanted to cover it with a tattoo and i don't know if you can see it on camera but see it like cave in like that mm. um basically it makes them a little do a little dance so i've always wanted to have something on there that would be dynamic and also my grandpa, we used to call him Grandpa Tiger. So I, I, I have a tiger right here. Um, on the back of my leg, this one is uh, my actual, it's my pet snake, Bumblebee, with a dagger going through a skull. And basically the TLDR in that one, that one has a lot of kind of like to unpack, but it's me realizing that I'm my own person and that I don't have to do what other people say. Like the surface level out of it is I, my parents always said like, you shouldn't get a snake. I'll never come to your apartment because I'm afraid of snakes kind of thing. And then I realized, like, I'm an adult. I can get a snake. Like, who cares? Um, so that's that guy. Then this one, this was my first commercially commercial tattoo, basically, done by an artist. And um, it's basically, it's a cactus that popped its own balloon. And it's a reminder that even when you want to help people, you should take a second to think about it because you'd, you could actually be harming them when you just want to be friends with them or just want to take care of them. Um, so that, because there's a lot of times where I was doing that at that time. Um, and then another one that I have, you can't really see here, but it's a bird right here. And it's because I had a really shitty tattoo, um, that my friend did and I just wanted to cover it and it was a wing. And so I made it into a bird. So big symbolism there. But then this one, this like has a ton of tattoos that I did myself and the other people did my friends. And basically, I mean, this is super messed up, but I, used to tattoo myself when I was sad just to feel the pain basically, which is kind of messed up. But, um, I am getting this covered with a big black Panther that starts on my hip and goes up like this. So oh, that's going to hurt. Suck. Oh, uh, I'm going to numb that up so bad, but yeah, I, I want to get that covered up because like I said, just like the painting, it's just a distant memory. And I look at it and I'm like, why is that still on there? I don't care about that anymore. Uh, and then I also have a, a flaming hermit crab skull that's right there. So 
And that's because I had a childhood pet named Purple Flame Head, and he was a hermit crab. I'm gonna get one of each of my brothers. So one here, one there, one there, and one there. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Oh god. So. I'm still thinking about the hip because this fucking sucks. Yeah. A lot. Oh, this sucks. The, the, the thigh is okay thing. though. To be honest, well, the inside of yeah. the thigh that you feel it all the way up. So yeah. For this sucks. This sucks. And this sucks. So I'm gonna I'm gonna numb that up so bad. God. I'll be fine. Uh, might have to do like four or five sessions. <laughs> But shout out to Rob. Rob's a homie. He might be coming to my art show in LA. So he's, Ooh, that's he's, exciting. Yeah, he's big deal. I like Rob. But yeah, so that's my tattoo tour. A lot of them, like I even have one on my thumb. I was just bored when I did one. Mm. I used to do a lot of smiley faces because I was not smiley at the time. And I was like, I need to have something to tell myself to be happy. And then I realized I was doing it in a negative way. So it was kind of the opposite. And then whatever. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. Yeah. At the surface, I like to tell people, I just wanted a cactus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is fun. I love seeing people's, like, especially people that are against tattoos. They're like, so what do your tattoos mean? Why would you Why would you just get a cactus with yeah. a balloon that popped? Or, like, a skull or whatever, and I'm like, it looks cool. And then you just see their, like, the gears, like, kind of breaking in their brain. is like, smoke coming out of their yeah. eyes. They're, like, like trying to come to terms that someone would get a tattoo just for fun. It's, yeah. It's, it's just so much fun. So... Yeah, those are my tattoos. Yeah. No, love that. And I guess since you did a little mini tattoo tour, I'll like explain like maybe yeah. one or two pieces. It hit me. I can kind of relate to the whole um, wanting to get tattoos when you're just like in a really dark place. Because uh, I've done that a couple times. Not really like are some in a really dark place. Some when I'm just like there is something like really big on my mind from just something that happened where it's like in general a negative experience but then like i'm like you know that's actually really interesting and like i kind of want to uh, just capitalize on those feelings and i like, just uh work through it and my way of working through it sometimes is it is a tattoo um <clears throat> like overcoming the adversity of the pain yeah like for example i had this like um weird i guess situationship thing last year uh super short but like Essentially, she had broken things off and said it's because I'm uh, too much of a nice guy. I've gotten that before. You know, I was just like, that's kind of a, like a good tattoo idea, actually. And so um, I got the word benignus uh, tattooed on my collarbone, mm -hmm. which in of itself is kind of a funny sounding word. So every time I read, I'm like, benignus. I don't know. But uh, Avery has art here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's like, okay. Um, or Avery does. Yeah, no, it's so sick though. But um, it means uh, kindness in Latin, which in of itself is kind of you know cheesy as fuck. You know, it's just like oh, I'm such a nice guy. You know, but no, it's because like legitimately, like being kind and just being a good person matters a lot to me. And it's like so, it's cactus, like you were saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, Not really, but keep going. Sorry, keep cutting you off. Oh no, 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 dude, you're totally fine. Um, keep going. Yeah. But yeah, so that's like why I got that piece i guess you know and especially like on the center of my like neck where like you see it in most clothes that i wear um and just yeah i don't know just never let myself turn to like a cold hearted person i guess no matter how much you know i may get hurt through stuff um and just all that cheesy shit i mean <clears throat> if it means something to you it's not cheesy no, I mean, I think I'm cheesy as hell, but I think that's also just because I'm my own biggest, you know, critic. Of course, and so, everybody is, you know, um, until you get an inflated ego like mine and then you're like, I'm the shit. Yeah. I'm fucking amazing, dude. Yeah. Why wouldn't you love me? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So uh, what else? Tell us about some more. Uh, I'll do, do you. I'll do one more just because don't want to explain too many all at the same time. I mean, I feel like the semicolon one is like pretty self-explanatory. I personally have never. Well, okay, so I've struggled through like different just mental health stuff before, um, but I've personally never attempted to take my own life or anything. Uh, but I have had plenty of friends who have, and so it's something that really does mean a lot to me, and just mental health awareness and uh support and just like really truly being there for your friends or the people that you love and care about like mm -hmm. that's something i hold really 
dear to me and maybe it could be a little bit of that whole like people pleaser thing as well but like i really just always want to if i can be there for my friends um and i i want to be that grounded very neutral and calm friend for others yeah. um just i want to be that friend that people can rely on if and when they need to yeah um and just feel comfortable and safe around so i don't think you need to say i want to be you can i can say you definitely are like i'd come to you with that kind of stuff so I appreciate about that. yeah man yeah um it's it definitely i find it interesting and i like your messaging seeing a semicolon <clears throat> but not having that experience yourself because it's like still raising awareness and it, it opens a discourse, right? Because when someone sees that, they want to talk about it. And so you're able to, like, whenever that it's, you don't have to come up with like, like for instance, I could put many semicolons, I'll just be completely honest, but if I were to have a semicolon, I would be really cagey and I wouldn't just tell a random person what I did basically. But for you, having the semicolon, it opens up a discourse like, okay, here's how I feel about mental health. There's no, th nothing you have to be cagey about, if you know what I mean. Like, yeah. You know, I don't just go around advertising, like, whatever happened, right? So, yeah. that's, I really like that. At first, I was, like, kind of taken aback. I was like, the, because it's, the symbolism to me is, like, very, you're signifying I did that. But hearing your explanation, I was like, okay, that's really cool. So, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no. No, no, no. Yeah. Like, you don't have to apologize every time you talk, dude. No, I just, I, I have this, like, fear of cutting people off. They don't like me anymore. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. No, dude, like, you were totally fine, because I am interviewing you, so, you know? I got you. And, but. I move this. Like, yeah, you're fine with it. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, so, I don't know. Really big thing for me. Um, and. Yeah, because once again, I I have like absolutely like no, I guess like uh, inhibitions when it comes to talking about that stuff. You know, I don't have any personal shame or guilt or anything like that. And so, and I know not everybody is comfortable with talking about their experiences or being open to others and being able to like just willing to connect with one another when it comes to anything in that like just general realm of stuff when it comes to mental health. And I really care a lot about the whole idea of, like, not just, like, leading by example, but uh, leading in that, like, you're opening yourself up. And so other people may be like, oh, shit, they're being open about this and willing to talk about it. Maybe I can just connect with them and then maybe other people will start to connect. <laughs> and, you know, it's going back to the whole reason why I started making these interview YouTube videos and stuff in the first place for creatives and stuff to be able to mm. be like, hey, like, I see what this person is doing and I really connect with them on a human level as well. Yeah. Uh, not, like, their art is amazing, but just I really like them as a person too and I would love to meet them. I would love to just do more and, like, you know, that inspiration and stuff. Um, for sure. I can just, yeah, just, I don't want people to ever feel like they're truly alone. Yeah. So. And I really like what you said about being open about it allows people to open up to you. So I think that's just a good, like, life lesson, basically. It's like, you, what I've realized with life is, like, when you put out the effort, you are testing someone to see if they match it, basically. And so that when they match it, or if they do in the future, like, that's when you become better friends. That's when you realize, like, like if I go to a party and I'm like, God, no one talked to me. It's like, did I try to talk to anyone? Mm -hmm. That's what you should never be asking. Oh, being mad at people that they didn't put in the effort. You should be mad at yourself for not putting in the effort and seeing if people would put it back. And I realized that in, in high school, I really didn't have any friends growing up at all. It's nice to everyone, but didn't really, I, I get too far. Yeah. Uh, probably the same, but I get too far in my head of like, what actions do I need to make a friend? Basically. That's how I was for the longest time. How to make friends. Exactly. Step one. Oh, I definitely looked that up. Um, and then I started hanging out with my friend Justin, and he introduced me to his swim friend group, which I already knew them all, but really in depth. And I started, I had the not eight passenger, nine passenger SUV, Toyota Sequoia, and I'd text in the group chat, hey, we're going to the lake. Raise your hand right now if you want me to come pick you up. 
And so it's not like we should go to the lake and then three days later, like who wants to go? And then it never happens. You know what I mean? It's like, we're going now. I'm putting the effort. You just have to show up. Um, and that's when I realized like when you do that and people match it, that's when you're going to become friends. And then it gives them opportunity to do the same thing to you basically. So just a life thing. And with anything, I, I love like, I went to, went tubing with some friends with these frat bros and it was like really stiff the conversation and then I just I asked something like really fucked up. I think I asked like if someone matched with you on Tinder, how much would the girl have to pay you to let her peg you or something like that? And they were like, "What's I had to like completely go through what it means and everything." And one guy said 5 bucks and I was like, "Props to you, brother." But that kind of broke the ice, right? It's kind of like they matched my ridiculous energy and we've now become really good friends, so um, I love that. That's very resonates with me, what you said. So. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I feel like one of the... You can cut that out if you want. No, no, no. No, no I'll leave that in. No, because that's the thing. Uh, I feel like a lot of my videos at this point with all the people that have been interviewing and stuff, like some of them are very just professional, well put together, very eloquent and all that shit, yeah. right? But then some of the other people, like, they're just super down to earth and like maybe a little uh, raunchy and stuff i like just like you know funny as fuck and uh, so okay do not be afraid as long as it's nothing like too fucked up right yeah um but just the whole point of these is to literally just be yourself and shit yeah you know and so um yeah um that's about the extent of my messed up stories that i'll tell <laughs> okay perfect um but yeah no and i definitely resonate a lot with what you said too because i feel like um one of the sh just shittiest feelings is when like you text a friend group and you're like, uh, hey, who wants to go do this? Whatever. And then just nobody responds. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, I pick and choose my friends very carefully now based off of like who's willing to just like usually put in the effort for stuff or just. Uh, or at least respond. Yeah. At least say something, you know. Um, she's like, I can understand. <laughs> I can do it, why can't anyone else? Same thing with Facebook. I said fuck it and reposted all my videos on there and now 55k. Hell yeah. Okay. And I have C. Okay, what do you want to do with this? Um so we're gonna paint background background and then set up for two pendulum paintings okay i can just wrap this background up while we're finishing up talking okay carry on um let me think what is your shoe size <laughs> what do your feet smell like <laughs> smell like feet hell yeah brother um my favorite flavor so do you have any, I guess, no colors that you tend to be more drawn to, or does it kind of change with it, whatever you're feeling? You black. just like black. I like black. I think the surface level is, sorry, that was kind of dramatic, me just slamming it down. Um, exactly. Um, I think the surface level of it is, I like the irony that I am Cole's color and mm -hmm. don't use color. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> um, same thing with, I think it's on my bio. I have, I am the hundred or the 74,000th most famous person on the internet. And now it's gone to like 186,000th because it's just, just an ambiguous number from famousbirthdays.com. Mm. And uh, so I love stupid stuff like that. But as far as black, I think for me, the reason is, is it is the best reflection of me playing essentially. So I could talk about playing earlier, just enjoying living basically. And like just getting to enjoying creating is when I have black and white is the most contrast and the most, um, easiest way to show what I did while I was enjoying myself essentially. So when mm -hmm. I use white on black, um, if I use my pendulum, if I use one of my contraptions, you saw exactly what I did in its purest form. And I think that that kind of sums it up for me. I think that everything's art and I think that your intentions, intentions are pure. Anything is, 
I don't know what I'm trying to say there, yeah. but no, yeah. essentially it's, it's a reflection of what I'm creating and I'm, it's all about the process. And so to show the end result is really special for me. So, yeah, cause there's no overthinking about like, oh, what color palette or how the colors will look together and how is this going to dry and age and all that shit. It's literally just black, white, just it's go. Fuck it, we ball. Yeah. And that's my motto. I think, uh, see that texture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show the camera. I wonder if it'll pick up in the light. Oh, it will. Probably. But yeah, <clears throat> carry on. Um, and I don't know, it's just, yeah, it's very just on brand for you, personality wise and all that. Appreciate and so, it, but okay, so are there any colors you personally hate? That's a great question. Um, I used to hate all colors, I used to just be black and white. Um, I think for me, I don't like, there's certain color combos I don't like. Like what? So anything that has some sort of resemblance of a brand of a sports team, red, white, and blue, anything that I'm like, oh, that looks like it just came from UT. Oh. Like for an orange and white or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, eh, I'm good. So basically like, I, I really don't like purple and orange together. There are good palettes for it, but I think if I were to pick two, it would be, it would be purple, like regular kind of like generic purple. I hate, um, and purple and orange. I'm like, Bleh. but I like orange by itself. Hmm. So it's more the color combos that do it for me. So that's why I like a color with white, super simple. You can have a lot of, it's really elegant. You have a lot said from something so simple. And if it, someone comes to you and says, I want a simplistic piece, and then they try to get a discount for it, I think you should charge more for simple because simple is harder to do than insane, right? Because if you mess up a simple painting, you can tell, but if I have a crazy painting, you can't tell I messed up, hmm. essentially. Same thing with like logo designers. A lot of times they'll charge more for minimal designs because of that. There's only one element that means anything, and if you mess it up, people know, so. Yeah. All right. You ready to rock? Si, sí, senor. Okay. So first one we're doing is the little one. Where is my punch tool? Mm. Would you punch these? <laughs> <laughs> That's been my joke. Avery's like, can you wash the dishes? How would you wash these? A big part of the reason why I ran last year was just because I was like, so just like, not good mentally in a lot of ways. Yeah. So I would like, just literally run for like two or three hours by myself, no music, no earbuds, just yeah. fueled by that shit, you know? So well, with you running when you feel bad, I'm curious with that. Are you, because I used to do this, like now looking back, are you kind of like repulsed by your, like by running? Like no. for me, I can't come to terms with running again because of how much I like, it hurt me. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I absolutely love running because it's still one of my healthiest outlets. Um, I just, I'm a little burnt out from training so much though because for the marathon, I was running like 30 plus miles every single week. Mm -hmm. And so like, Eesh, that's a lot. Especially because uh, I realized at some point that all that stress from running was really fucking with my hormones and thus my skin. Oh, really? So, uh, I, right now, I'm still in the process of slowly healing my skin up, which you know, is kind of important for modeling. You know? Oh, yeah. And so I've been very slowly uh, taking care of myself, resting more, uh, taking a break from running a lot. And mm -hmm. um, I'll only really go run if I really want to. Um, That's good. And Or to maintain like a certain level of cardiovascular fitness. Um, because, I don't know, I just... Like, I used to, every single week, just run around White Rock Lake, so it's nine miles, yep. and I it would just be, like, easy cake for me. Like, no stress, just do it. It was just something I did. Just vibes. Um, yeah, but now I uh, want to run and stuff. I'm, like, a little bit more uh, selective about when and why I'm running, and what my goal is, I guess, with it, because, especially because uh, I'm so focused on lifting right now, just, I don't know. I got weight, lifting, all that jazz. It's a it's, lot at once. Plus working, plus this. 
Yeah, and it's just easy to go do a, like, I guess, 45-minute gym session, right? Mm -hmm. uh, versus 45 minutes of running, that's only, like, maybe, like, three, four, maybe five miles, depending on how hard I want to push myself. Yep. And, but I feel like the amount of recovery it takes to recover from pushing myself with running is so much higher than lifting. Yeah. Um, and so there's no way I can have a shit ton of energy after going for a really hard run uh, to be able to do other stuff versus if I were to have a pretty good workout where I'm not completely frying myself, but still like good, I can still like, you know, do other stuff in my yeah. life. It's like the aerobic versus anaerobic. Just some people are cut for certain kinds. Some people aren't, right? Yeah. And, um, but definitely like not repulsed by it, especially just because of um, fitness, I feel like hopefully will always be a, such a big part of my life. Yeah. Um, and if anything, I think a lot less about the exercising itself more about my reasoning for doing it mm -hmm. you know because for a long time and even sometimes now it's like fueled by um like body dysmorphia yep. or like eating disorder stuff sad yeah and so but that's good like setting your intention behind it so i yeah. talk about that a lot that's fantastic man yeah thank you and yeah um this piece is pretty cool yeah no i really like um I like the composition a lot. So whenever, at this point, since you've been doing it for so long, do you just know how oh, yeah. the pendulum's going to swing and how it's going to end up looking? Yep. I mean, there's some times where there's a little bit of a nuance to it where I'm like, it could do this, it could do that. Uh -huh. Like this one, I was intending to do this, and it's actually going to do it, this pattern where the lines kind of come into the center Okay. Um, and make a 3D effect, but it's actually not going to do that. Uh, so there's like a couple nuance patterns that i'm like yeah that's not gonna not gonna fly but for the most part yeah i can just kind of tell mm. i'm like yep i know that this is gonna do this pattern at this point and that's that's that so yeah we're gonna actually do that now in this actual pattern what i was intending on doing it's just real long and skinny mm. brings it all together that's so cool yeah because uh even with the last painting that we did together it wasn't a pendulum painting, I think. The yeah, we didn't do a pen. Did we do a pendulum painting? No, we just did the wall splatter. Yeah, just go at it, and then even the one that's hanging up right now in my living room, I'll throw a picture mm -hmm. here. Um, that one, I don't think you used the pendulum either. Nope, it was all uh, inspired by a famous artist that I forgot her name, Helen Rosenthaler, I think. Mm. She's pretty amazing. All right. So one last swing. I'm just loving this intricateness in the center. It's just really fun. So I'm just playing. Like I said, just play. Oh, and there it is. See how this it, the line's going skinnier and skinnier into yeah. the center? It's going to meet soon, and then we're going to grab it. Three, two, one. There it is. All right. Piece is completed. Saying bye to my video. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Um, that one's wild. I wish I didn't have as much paint pooling here, but for the most part, I love it. No, actually, thought? I like it. The fact that it's pooling so much. Um, pretty wild. Let's show the camera. Oh, yeah, sure. Wow. I'm going to go put it in the front room. I won't get okay. paint on your camera, I yeah. promise. Gracias. Then, uh, <laughs> then. So we're, this is out of the splash zone that's in the splash zone. Cool. Exactly. Okay, so we could do two things with this one. We could either do my spinny contraption or another pendulum painting. I kind of vote spinny contraption. Go for it. So I'm gonna, I wanna make it look like barbed wire. Okay. I'm here for the ride. Yeah. All right, you're, this one's gonna get insanely messy though. Okay. So you'll probably want I'll take a step back. Like multiple. <laughs> Pour my paint in here. I'm gonna start seeping out the sides. See that? Oof, it's heavy. There we go. Okay. Now, go! Isn't that fun? See ya. 
that's just like... Now we flip it and we go this way. I'm just gonna start spinning the other way. There it is, that's what I was looking for. So I'm looking for like, see how it's starting to come together like different patterns? I'm looking yeah. for like a lattice effect. It's gonna take a while. We're gonna be here for a bit. Woo! That was close. Isn't it so pretty though? It is. I just like get just transfixed by this thing. It just spins the other way now. It's great in slow motion too. But yeah, I just like I said, I just like to play. And what I love is when people ask me what I do, I'm like, I make abstract art, I build contraptions that paint for me. It's just like, it's really true. It's like, it's a lot in the setup. It's a lot about the process. And like I said, process oriented artists or process artists. It doesn't have to be the perfect end result. As long as I enjoyed it, I don't care. I've been wanting to list a piece of my website that looks like this. Okay, here we go. Alright. Yeah, so, um, I should have let you paint. I kind of just took charge here. Oh, there you go. I just, I can't get paint on my clothes. That's so. true. Oh, yeah, you got your, got your event going on. Uh, so, I guess at what point do you decide? when it's done. So I, in my opinion, I think the only thing that separates an abstract artist from a regular human is the overwhelming urge to know when to stop. Hmm. Uh, your vision, everything like that, but at the end of the day, it's, I should have stopped right here. And so the way that you work on that is, wow, I calculated that well, um, is actually just painting, or it's just doing paintings and taking like mental snapshots of like, this is when I probably would have stopped, and pictures. And so next time you're like, okay, I know that at this point I should have stopped. I felt, oh God, sorry. Oh, you're uh, you didn't get any, but that was sketchy. Uh, I know that this is when I should have stopped, so next time I'm like, bam, done. Um, so that's pretty much the only thing. And so for me, for this kind of piece, it, I went in with the intention of like, let's just have fun until I feel satisfied. Yeah. So I'm pretty close. I'm looking for, see this grouping? I'm looking for that all over it. See how like they connect? Even though it's yeah. such a random pattern, there is still a uh, the cross hatching and there's a consistency even with it being so much chaos, there's still order within it. So it's pretty much about running out of paint, so I'm gonna put some more in. Yeah. It's interesting because uh, even with the last piece that we did together, you had mentioned there's very specific, just like things that you would look for. Yeah. And like, even though it's like very chaotic, it's not just random and like absent-minded. There are like just actual things, patterns. Yeah, and sometimes I'm not even looking for them. Sometimes it's like, let's just see what happens. That's pretty much all my pieces. I just, I'm like, yeah, let's see what happens. So. Yeah, I agree. I think there's key indicators of what I'm looking for, but also it's like maybe something new happens that I never expected. Like, what happens if I did this and the entire thing ended up looking like the exact same pattern? Like, that'd be something unexpected, and that'd be okay. I should stop it here, kind of thing. So, coil it up a little bit. It's just so much fun, dude. Like, just going crazy with it. It's almost done. See what I mean, though? Like, there's all these connecting points. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm looking for, and I'm loving this so much. But that's the thing, is I can be fully gestural. I can't tell this what to do, so there's no thinking involved. It's just like, all right, let's. I can just tell it to spin some more. That's about it. Like, right now, once this finishes, do my last little bit, where I'm literally just going to Hold it right in the center, do a couple spins. And it doesn't even get on the canvas mostly. It does, a little bit. But yeah, so we're pretty much done here. I feel satisfied with this. It gives it so much complexity. 
And there's one part that I want to cover that, don't tell anybody I just did this, but see, it's like it, it puts a different movement on it. Like you can even kind of tell what just went down looks different than the rest. Yeah. But I just kind of did that for your sake. But yeah, so that's the end of this painting. A lot going on, but I kind of love it. What do you think? I like it too. Yeah. Like, um, I don't know. It's interesting in that, like, even though it's a lot of separate different spins and shit like that, right? Yeah. It's not a full European pattern. It still looks like it would be like something that a spider would calculate themselves. Exactly. That's yeah. what I, exactly a great way to say it. There are patterns within the randomness because of the way it spins. It does the spin consistently. Yeah. So you know what it's going to create, like, the groupings here, the groupings there, the cross hatching in here, over here there's this arc. So even, and that's what I love about my contraptions is no matter how random they are, they still come out looking somewhat consistent, which is awesome. Yeah, and I think like just all the differences between like the heavier, thicker lines that start to build up, mm -hmm. and in the, contrast with the really thin ones, I just, yeah. I know, it, just, it just looks cool. It reminds me of just like a sewed lace yeah. piece. And I really like this because there's actually like a cross point between a ton of lines, like a perfect yeah, line yeah. in there. This is all paint where your feet are. I don't know if you care, but that's fine. But yeah, that's the end of the painting. So I figure now you want to head to the outro? Yeah, let's shoot the outro. Alright, outro. Oh shit. <coughs> oh yeah, it gets a little slippy. Is there any big things coming up that you just want people to know about and what can they expect from you? Um, big things right now are my art show, June 2nd, Los Angeles, Exhibit A Gallery, dream come true for me, I've always wanted to do a show in LA, shout out to Zach Frank for my collaborator for the event, um, and then also, um, in, uh, August, I'm going to Las Vegas for PoorCon, so if you want to come through, hmm. um, you can take classes from a bunch of people, meet some cool people, do you know Kellen Schaub? Oh, he's the guy that inspired me to start painting. He's gonna be there. I'll get to meet him. Ooh. Um, I he he'll, he'll either be really nice or a total douchebag. Oh, I'm I think it'll be the latter. Honestly, it'd be kind of fun. Make some content with it. Uh, but like, hey, we're doing a collab, me and Callan. He's like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so those are the two big things right now. There's some other things in the works, but as far as locked in stuff, those are the two. Okay, so. that's exciting. And um, where can people find you? Social media, all of that. Uh, Cole's color on literally anything. C O L E S C O L O R. Spelled the lame way, not the Canadian way. Hey. Um, yeah, so that's where you can find me pretty much any platform. I'm literally, there's a, the largest Chinese uh, platform for social media is called Billy Billy, and I just got invited to be a premier creator for them. <laughs> so okay, so I've got to switch back to the phone because the fucking camera died, but uh, I don't know. Thank you all once again. Thank you so much, dude. I like really appreciate you. Your hands are full of paint. Wolf. No one even do that. No one even do it. There we go. And so, um, Chip, did you do you have any last words for just anything you want people to know? Um, I mean, come on to Jerry's. Uh, what is it called? Be called podcast show. I just YouTube show. I guess I don't know. Just... Interview show thing. Uh, he does a really good job of like listening and then asking versus like here are my bullet points. I need to ask these things, and you can have that as well. But you do a really good job, man. So I'm excited to see this grow. So go check out Jerry. You can uh, you want to plug yours while you're here? Yeah. So Jerry's amazing. Check out his pages. Do you want to shout yourself out right now while we're here? I mean, I don't really care I because they're already watching the video, right? Okay. So, all right. But okay, sick. Farewell, everyone.